I frankly think it's a, a tragedy in America that the small investor has been convinced by the media that they don't have a chance. Big institutions with all their computers and all their degrees and all their money have all the edges. And it just isn't true at all. And when they're convinced, when this happens, when this occurs, people act accordingly. They, when they believe it, they buy stocks for a week and they buy options and they buy the Chile fund this week and next week it's the Argentina fund and, and they get results proportional to that kind of investing. And that's very bothersome. I think the public can do extremely well in the stock market on their own. I think the fact that institutions dominate the market today is a positive for small investors. These institutions push stocks on usual lows, they push them on usual highs. For someone they can sit back and have their own opinion, know something about the industry, this is a positive, it's not a negative. The single most important thing to me in the stock market for anyone is to know what you own. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. They, they would not be able to tell you why they own it. They couldn't say in a minute or less why they own it. Actually, if you really press them down, they'd say the reason I own this is the sucker's going up. And that's the only reason, <laughs> that's the only reason they own it. And if you can't explain, I'm serious, you can't explain to a 10 year old in two minutes or less why you own a stock, you shouldn't own it. And that's true, I think about 80% of people that own stocks. I made money in Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> I can understand it. I, uh, when there was recessions, I didn't have to worry about what was happening. I could go there and people were still there. I didn't have to worry about low price Korean imports. I made 10 or 15 times my money in Dunkin' Donuts. Those are the kind of stocks I can understand. If you don't understand it, it doesn't work. This is the single biggest principle. You need an edge to make money too. People have incredible edges and they throw them away. I'll give you a quick example of uh, Smith Klein. We didn't have Smith Klein when Tagman first came out, a year after it came out. Let's say your spouse, your mother, your father, you were a nurse, you were a druggist, you're writing all these prescriptions. Tagman was doing an amazing job of curing ulcers. About two years after the product was on the market, it made five or six times your money. I mean, all the druggists, all the nurses, all the people, millions of people saw this product. And they're out buying oil companies, you know, or drilling rooms, you know. It happens. And then three years later, or four years later, Glaxo, even a bigger company, it's a huge company, a British company, brought out Zantac, which was a better, at that time, an improved product. And you could have seen that take market share do well. You could have bought Glaxo and triple your money. So you only need a few stocks in your lifetime. They're in your industry. I think of people, if you'd worked in the auto industry, let's say you're an auto dealer, the last 10 years. You would have seen Chrysler come up in the minivan. You've seen, if you're a Buick dealer, a Toyota dealer, a Honda dealer, you would have seen the Chrysler dealership packed with people. You could have made 10 times your money on Chrysler a year after the minivan came up. So if you're a car dealer, you only need to buy a few stocks every decade. When your lifetime's over, you don't need a lot of five baggers to make a lot of money starting with $10,000 or $5,000. So when, when you see this coming, you could say, wait a second, I can make some money. When an industry goes from terrible to mediocre, the stock goes north. When it goes from mediocre to good, the stock goes north. When it goes from good to terrific, the stock goes north. There's lots of ways to make money in your own industry. You can be a supplier in the industry, you can be a customer. This thing, this thing happens in the paper industry, it happens in the steel industry. It doesn't happen every week. But if you're in you're some field, you'll see a turn, you'll see something in the publishing industry. These things come along. And it, it's just mind-boggling, people throw it away. Another key element is that you have plenty of time. People are in an unbelievable rush to buy a stock. I'll give an example of a well-known company. Walmart went public in October of 1970. 1970 went public. Already had a great record. It had 15 years performance, great balance sheet. You could have waited 10 years saying you're a very conservative investor. You're not sure this Walmart can make it. You want to check, see them operate in small towns, you're afraid they can only make it in seven or eight states. You want to wait till they go to more states. You keep waiting. You could have bought Walmart 10 years after it went public and made 35 times your money. If you bought it when they went public, you would have made 500 times your money. But you could have waited 10 years after Walmart went public and made uh, 30, over 30 times your money. You could have waited three years after Microsoft went public and made 10 times your money. Now, if you knew something about software, I know nothing about software. If you knew something about software, you would have said, these guys have it. I don't care who's going to win, Compaq, IBM. I don't know who's going to win Japanese computers. I know Microsoft, MS-DOS is the right thing. You could have bought Microsoft. You can just watch it. You have plenty of time. People are in an amazing rush 
to purchase a security. They're out of breath when they call up. You don't need to do this. Study history. And history is the important thing you learn from. What you learn from history is the market goes down. It goes down a lot. The math is simple. There's been 93 years a century. This is easy to do. The market's had 50 declines of 10% or more. So 50 declines in 93 years. But once every two years, the market falls 10%. We call that a correction. Of those 50 declines, 15 have been 25% or more. That's known as a bear market. We've had 15 declines in 93 years. So every six years, the market's gonna have a 25% decline. That's all you need to know. You need to know the market's gonna go down sometime. If you're not ready for that, you shouldn't own stocks. And it's good when it happens. If you like a stock at 14 and it goes to six, that's great. You understand the company, you look at the balance sheet, and they're doing fine. You're hoping to get to 22 with it. 14 to 22 is terrific. Six to 22 is exceptional. So you take advantage of these things. They're going to happen. No one knows when they're going to happen. People tell you about it after the fact that they predicted it. They predicted it 53 times. And uh, so you can take advantage of the volatility in the market if you understand what you own. I love volatility. I, I, think, I remember when uh, 1972, the market went from uh, uh, down dramatically and Taco Bell went from 14 to one. They had no debt. They never had a, a restaurant close. And uh, I started buying at seven. But it, kept on to it and it went to one and uh, it was the largest position in Magellan in 1978 when it was bought out by $42 by Pepsi-Cola. I think it would have gone to 400 if they had to buy it out. I think volatility is terrific. I think it is very, I think these calls are very important. I don't think the market going up 80 points one day and down 80 the next uh, is a good thing for the public. I think that's not a very good thing. But I think all of these callers and all these other things to keep the volatility down each day is important. But the market's going to go up and down. Well, the human nature hasn't changed a lot in 25,000 years. And some event will come out of left field and uh, the market will go down or the market will go up. So I, volatility will occur and markets will continue to have these ups and downs. I think that's a great opportunity if people can understand what they own. Basically, corporate profits have grown about 8% a year historically. So corporate profits double about every nine years. The stock market ought to double about every nine years. So go up 8% a year. And, and stocks will fall. That's all there is to it. There's always something to worry about. Uh, if you own stocks, there's always something to worry about. You can't get away from it. The only reason we got out of the depression was World War II. We got another recession in the early 50s. They said, we're gonna go right back into a depression. People worried about a depression in the 50s and they worried about nuclear war. Remember when oil went from four to 40 and it was gonna go to 100 and we're gonna have a depression. Remember that one? Well, about three years later, the same experts, now higher paid, Oil's now at 10, they said it was going to go to four, and we're going to have a depression. And then the Japanese, remember how the Japanese were going to own the world? Remember that one? And that we're going to have a depression? And then about two years later, we're all worried about Japan collapse. It's unbelievable. I mean, it, the LDC debt, remember the LDC debt? Remember that one? All these countries, all Chase had lent their net worth to Brazil, Chile, Peru, and all these other countries, so and all the other countries. And LDC said they were not going to pay it back. And we're going to have a depression. It always ends and we're going to have a depression. Or the Great Depression. We're going to have the Great Depression. Or the big one. The big one's coming. So there's always something to worry about. And the key organ in your body in the stock market is your stomach. It's not the brain. It's always going to be scary. There's going to be always something to worry about. And you just have to forget all of it. Cut it all out and own good companies or own turnarounds. Study them and you'll do well. Stocks will beat the hell out of money markets. They can beat the hell out of bonds. No group of, you think of it, any corporations, McDonald's, any of these great companies, Marriott, you name it, they've never got together and said, geez, you know, we're really doing well. Why don't we raise the coupon on our bonds? You know, those, those bondholders are really loyal. You know, you, know, we, you know, we've been given 8%. Why don't we raise it to 9 You know, uh, But companies like Automatic Data Processing, maybe Payrolls, amazing prosaic company, 32 years of higher earnings, 32 years of double-digit earnings growth. We've had recessions, we've had wars, changes in Congress, changes in the Supreme Court. 32 years about earnings. So, and that's what you're relying on. Johnson Johnson, 30 years about earnings. And these are general parts, 42 years about earnings. Emerson Electric, 38 years about earnings. You don't see companies like this in other parts of the world. I'm trying to convince people there is a method. There are reasons for stocks that go up. Uh, Coca-Cola is earning 30 times per share what they did 32 years ago. The stock has gone up 30-fold. Bethlehem Steel is earning less than they did 30 years ago. 
The stock is half its price of 30 years ago. Stocks are not lottery tickets. There's a company behind every stock. If the company does well, the stock does well. It's not that complicated. People get too carried away. I was very consistent. The market went down when I ran Magellan on 13 years, the market went down nine times. And every time the market went down, Magellan went down. It was nine for nine. And, uh, you know, because it's very important. There's another one of these numbers you ought to write down. If you put $1,000 in a stock, all you can lose is 1000 I've done that several times. And, uh, but if you're right, you can make 5000 10000 20000 So this business, you don't have to be right one out of two times. You can be right one out of four. The times you're right, you know the company's doing well, you know they're doing a great job, and you add to it, or at least you don't sell it, which is a terrible tragedy.